to yeah. bite a gender kid. Yeah. Like, the next time you bite someone, I'm going to bite you. Um, yeah. So now that we're in agreement, don't bite people, don't bite people. Because yeah. the next time, I will bite you. Would you be, would you be okay with that? <laughs> but I have, I have seen it. <laughs> Facebook. I've never recorded a single stuff. video. How does Facebook know anything about me? Oh, not really. Well, YouTube. I don't, I'm just playing. I'm just I don't have 100% confidence. No, I shamelessly plug everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, let's see. Do I look handsome? Am I good over there? Everything alright? Of course. Yes. Nice, thanks. Yes. Appreciate it. My name is Ty. I have a hobby. Hi, I'm Bethany. Bethany, nice yes. to meet you. I saw your talk today. That was yes. very cool. Very, yes. very cool. So normally I have a hobby where I talk to people about things that I'm strongly motivated by, things that they really strongly believe. It's fun if it's something that you think you may not be wrong about. And we could just, I'll ask that questions. I'm not trying to make this an argument or a debate. But I'm really trying to help you figure out, like, did I come to this conclusion using a good, reliable method? And um, if you want to do that on me, I'm totally fine with it too. I like to think of it as a conversation. Is there anything that you have, like, a really strong belief about? I think I need help on the uh, spanking for kids. Spanking for kids? That's definitely like a heavy topic. What's That's your position right now? one of my first um, talks that I saw in street epistemology. Uh -huh. It stirred like an emotional response for me. I probably would say I'm at a 90% confidence mm -hmm. that I'm against it. 90% confidence that yeah. you're against it. Probably when I first heard a talk, I was probably at 100. Okay. Now, now I've got that. Lower confidence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's your position on spanking kids? Why are you still so high on don't spank your kids ever? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> the Greek classic is how I was raised. So I'm really not not for it at all. Mm. Um, I don't do it for my kids. Mm -hmm. And um, I research the child development and how. You know how it can be harmful down the road and cause sure. these like adverse child experiences or really weird fetishes. Like yeah, 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 weird fetishes. You know, yeah, like just you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, is there a middle ground? Like maybe not necessarily. Like you do agree, would you say in discipline mm -hmm. your child, yes. but just not like harmful abuse. Smacking them or not. right, yeah, okay. more like more the constructive, positive parenting. Less on the let's see if we can find something else besides spanking first. Okay, yeah. what would be those some of those middle grounds? Probably, um, like taking away privileges or um, timeouts mm -hmm. or. Uh, Definitely probably timeouts and taking away privileges are the two main methods that I use for my children. Okay. Is there a possibility that something a little bit more harsh than that, not necessarily of spanking, but more harsh than just timeouts and taking away privileges could have a construction, uh, a constructive, beneficial outcome? Yes. What would you say is like the most, not spiky, but like the most aggressive form of discipline that would actually... Yeah. It's yeah. Like that isolating the child instead of just kind of helping them regulate their feelings. Sure. Yeah. And I, when I think I heard that, I was like, uh oh. It's like here I was away from spanking and now I'm, I'm moving towards it. And I thought, you know, time out was effective, but it may not be effective for my second child because mm. I don't know yet. Is there anything that's more harm or more aggressive than timeouts that you'd still be okay with? Like if I said, hey, I don't have kids, but like pretend I did. I said, um, I don't time out or uh, what was the other one? Time out or take away privileges. Mm -hmm. I just say, if you do this again, mm -hmm. then something bad's going to happen. Like, I, if, if you do this, it'll be immediate. But, like, we're in agreement that if you do this action again, you, you might get hurt because I don't know how to control myself on this. This mm -hmm. hurt me so much that I'm letting you know again, mm -hmm. child and me, you should be well enough player that if you do this again, this bad thing's going to happen afterwards. Kind of like stepping out in the street. Or like um, you hit a kid in mm -hmm. school or something like that. It's like, listen, do you know what that feels like? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't do it again, or I'm going to show you what that feels like. Or something like, like that. biting. Biting probably heard, is probably yeah, better. I've heard that one. That's probably best. That's, yeah. I when I was growing up, I bit a lot of people. I've yeah. been, I've been yeah. adults before, yeah. teachers and stuff yeah. like that. It's like if you bite, I'm going to bite you. 
too, so you know what it feels like. Yes. Are you cool with that? Because yeah. the next time you do it, yeah. the next that's what I'm, I'm yeah. talking to my yeah. engineer kid. Like, yeah. The next time you bite someone, I'm gonna bite you. Um, yeah. So now that we're in agreement, don't bite people. Don't bite people. Because yeah. the next time I will bite you. Would you be Would you be okay with that? <laughs> but I have I have seen it. <laughs> I would, be, I would be trouble with that. Can I pull into a context that I'm a little bit more familiar with? I got a cat. I love yes. my cat. I'm a cat yes. dad. I'm a really, really yes, big cat dad. Um, I squirt them with water. Yes. Or I, I move from water to air. Like I have a spray can of air and it works way better because one, it sounds like a hiss. Yeah. And two, there's no like long lasting mark. Because I think once he does something bad and I spray him with the air, 30 seconds he has no idea what what I, is wrong. But if he's still wet, I feel bad. So yeah. just quick air spray can. And now it's gotten to the point where if I think he's doing something bad, because like I can hear some rumbling in the kitchen, <laughs> I just spray the can and I can hear him jump off the shelf and yeah. just like walk back to his bed and be like, mm -hmm. rooms away, no yeah. problem. If it was something like that for a person, like mm -hmm. if it was an equivalent to like, hey, I'm going to spray you with water if you do that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't respect that. Would you be more cool with that? Yeah. It doesn't sound, I mean, it's kind of strange, but I guess it would, it doesn't seem to me quite as harmful as, as like spanking or not quite, maybe not as humiliating, I'm not sure. What about washing your mouth with soap? Ooh. Yeah, I'm not kind of that either. Yeah. I think the pulp. That's, that's a good. I don't like the chemical aspect. Of it. Yeah, yeah, like exploring other possibilities. There's something I always wonder, like, you know, I'm like this deeply held belief because I'm like, okay, I just want to make sure I'm in the, like, the right place. Okay, how about this? How about this? I think I might be going on to something because I'm working it out too. <laughs> Someone does, a kid does something bad, like, beats up a kid, another kid in school. You're like, you find out your kid's a bully. Now you say, okay, check this out. Not only am I taking away your privileges, I'm not going to borrow the timeouts. You have to do these activities, mowing the lawn, helping that person mow the lawn, mow that kid's lawn. Like, you're going to have, you're going to talk to this person and you're going to work for that kid for the next couple of weeks or so and you're going to do some hard labor. It's going to suck. You're going to be sore. Mm -hmm. But you're going to build some character in, in terms of like empathy. People, yeah. Like building empathy with yeah. regard to people because you will realize what he's coming from when you yeah. do his work for him. Yeah. And if you don't do that, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. That's the that's the circumstance you are before we get back to square one. Mm -hmm. Imaginary kid. I'm sorry. If I'm no, 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 you're but like imaginary <laughs> kid, would you be okay with that? Yeah. Is yeah. that something you'd be more mm -hmm. aligned with? Yeah. Hard labor. Well, hard labor with bath and bricks and water, right? <laughs> 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 don't send me to your prison camp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chores are good. I think I think chores and like learning how to respect other people and like community kind of like give back. Even like yeah. roadside trash pickup. Yeah. You know? Like Put in some community hours. Yeah. We're, there's a group of like there's a Boy Scout group or there's like yeah. a YMCA group. You're now volunteering hours for them until we're back to square one. Like picking up trash at a park. I mean, I learned a lot about like, hey, littering is not okay. Boom. Because I don't want to do that ever again. Okay. <laughs> so I think you know, I know short talk, but like I think we found like a really good middle ground that's more extreme than yeah. you know like, timeouts and yeah. You know, Privileges, yeah, like yeah. now you're going to benefit the society a little yeah, bit. Yeah, build some character. Maybe you yeah. might actually like it. Make yeah. it into a career or something. Yeah, see, it can work out. <laughs> the things I ponder when I'm watching straight epistemology videos. I'm awesome, like, oh, yeah. Bethany. If you had time for something else, are you? Where are you religiously? If you don't want to ask, you're an atheist. Yes. Atheist, as in, what do you mean by that when you say atheist? Agnostic atheist. Oh, yeah. what do you what do you mean by those words? It's, I don't. I only asked only. I, I don't know. I don't believe a God exists, but I can't show it 100%, mm. but I like the belief. Were, were you ever religious? What made the transition occur? Last year. Okay, so you're very, you're like relatively minted agnostic atheist. Yeah. Okay, I'm an agnostic atheist myself. I'm wondering like what... I, I always find it really interesting about what changed people's minds. Do you have a moment to talk about that? Yeah, it was, it's actually the spanking issue is what kind of helped me overturn, like, my, I'm sitting on the fence as an agnostic mm -hmm. forever. Agnostic, gnostic? Just, I, I don't know, I just always call myself an agnostic. Ah, uh, you didn't embrace the about, atheist way. Yeah, for probably about 13 years. Got it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so you were already sitting on the fence for a while. Mm -hmm. And then the spanking issue is what made it. One, yeah, one of them, yeah, major. If it turned out Christians weren't the ones spanking, and if, if, if I can show you a statistic that actually atheists spank kids more than Christians, would that make you go back a little bit? It would definitely make me want to do more research and consider both the strong, you know, that strong position. 
they wouldn't, because I try to be more middle of the road instead of black and white. Okay. Now, as before, I could, I could, I didn't know how to do that. If spanking wasn't an issue whatsoever, would you still believe in a god right now? Mm-mm. Why not? Probably just because, like, I had a major falling out with my parents, and, um, and I went to school, and I started to just learn more stuff about the world around me, and that is definitely, that is definitely the stepping stones, too. Okay. Just throwing this out, I'm not saying it's the case. Pretend there's a religion out there that's like, fallouts with parents happen, but check out all this awesome science stuff, mm-hmm. and we don't agree on spanking kids to the same certainty that you are. Plus, our God, Mr. TKO or whatever <laughs> exists. Now you have the perfect religion to fall into because now it seems to meet your needs on, you know, religious parents sometimes. But you can build them up long term. You got the science stuff in there. You got the no spanking. It's like the perfect God belief. Would you believe in that God? Seems like there's something more important than just the spanking, family relationships, and science. Like, what's keeping you from believing in God right now? Probably the evidence. Okay. And the fact that it is unfalsifiable. So I'm just kind of like, mm, yeah. So if you had a more falsifiable claim, like something would be like, I know what this doesn't look like, now I have a firmer reference to what it does look like. Yeah, and, and we had a my therapist that I was seeing who was highly religious, and we talked about a story oh. about, um, I think, I don't know if it was Joshua or whatever it was, but he tried to tell me that that NASA had discovered a lost day in time. A what? A lost day in time. A what? Yeah. NASA. NASA discovered it. NASA discovered a lost day in time? Yeah, and they used the Bible to help them discover this lost day in like time. A like, they, yeah, like a leap year? Yeah, like a leap like a computer programming glitch. So, oh, so like, like the timing. somehow a day happened that nobody yeah. knew about? Yeah, like, like they couldn't uh, calibrate their computers the right way for something. Oh. So they had to refer to the Bible. What? Find this lost day of time when some Bible starts. I can't remember the characters. And your, the, your therapist said this? Yes, yes. He said, didn't you know What did this, this therapist say? <laughs> that's another bandwagon. I'm he sorry, goes, sorry. He goes, <laughs> I know, it was so funny. He goes, don't you know that NASA read the story in the Bible and they said that the, the, the sun stopped still in the sky. No way. And they lost a whole day. And then once NASA read this Bible story and, and put it together, then they were able to discover or back together this lost day of time. And timing no and their way. And goes, okay. Didn't you know that was true? And then I remember walking out of my therapist's office thinking, no, I don't believe what you're saying. And I researched this, and it was a Snopes saying it had been that's huge. Gone. And it was even on Answers in Genesis. Sure. And said it was not real. Wow. So and, and that shook your faith. Well, that was one of them. I was like, okay, mm. if I've been holding out, this is this is definitely one of the major. I'm done. I like. I can't believe this is not an error. This is mm, not real. Sure. This can't be proved true. And I, just, I just don't. I don't feel compelled to believe in, in this anymore. And that. Did you find yourself with the atheist label as like, I can't help but be an atheist, or did you like seek out? I need to find a way to describe my point of view. What matches that? Agnostic, sure. Actually, yeah. atheist kind of fits it. I don't know. If you do. What do you? That was for me. That's that was my experience. Uh, I don't know. It was just like I went down like a massive rabbit hole of like you know talks on YouTube mm-hmm. and podcasts, and I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I think I really I I was surprised that I identified with that like when the process of researching childhood and spanking and then realizing about the harmful effects and because sure. like, I wanted an atheist perspective. That's sure. that's kind of what started too. Like, hmm, I'm gonna like dig it away from the religious side and maybe see what the, the atheist community or the agnostic community has to say about child development and, and discipline issues and then that just like opened up the science and the fields mm. and like, ooh, Basically, like this conflicts with me. As soon, as, soon as you stepped out of this, the the religious perspective mm-hmm. just gave you more ideas to look at. I'm not yeah. sure if atheist, I'm not sure if atheism has a perspective on how to raise a kid. No, right? But like, there's definitely communities of atheists that seem to have a non-religious point of view with regards to yeah, raising kids. Yeah, yeah, it was more welcoming in the science research side. Reason based. It's like yeah. I'm looking at the evidence to see what's the best way to raise my kid. Yeah. And not one book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, right. it's convoluted. It is. <laughs> but you know what? I do think it's very cool that the way how I see it, when you're in a, when you're in a religious perspective, you have one point of view on how to do something. Mm-hmm. And because of that optimizing that method 
is going to slow itself down because there's no one really challenging it. Mm -hmm. But in a atheist perspective, where it's anybody, anybody can believe anything else they want, aside mm -hmm. along with, and I don't believe in a God. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of different ideas clashing with each other, and it tends to be that the best ones rise to the top, and these are the ones that we're all happy to follow because we don't have a dogma telling us to stick with what we have, mm -hmm. and it's just the smashing ideas that yeah. make the best one float to the top. It's like, oh, here's my kids like that. Yeah. Mary's kids are pretty good. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It's just amazing because, like, you know, I come from a really strict authoritarian type of parenting background, and um, and the community around me is super religious, and they they talk about my son, go, oh, he's so well behaved, and he's so awesome, and I'm okay. like, you know, I've never had to spank him, and he's four, and I'm like, yeah. Yes. And I mean, every kid's different. Right. And I had to have that caveat on the back of my True. mind. So, like, my mom never spanked me, but she would let me stay home anytime I said I don't want to go to school. So, like, <laughs> anytime she's like, Mom, I don't want to school stay home and that put pressure on me of like maybe I should maybe I should tell that to her because she's just going to be totally she would sign papers for me ahead of time just like turn on anytime you don't want to school at school just give the papers just no I signed out 10 of them I got job do what you got to do and I'm like I got to stay with, stay with school I got my PhD Every, yeah. I stayed with it yeah. like that kind of responsibility that she put on me yeah. kind of helped out a lot and I yeah. think it's possible. Yeah. That's all I'm trying yeah. to Yeah. <laughs> That's Bethany. great. So good to meet you. Really great talking to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is all I do. Oh, that's, <laughs> now, that's cool because I'm really looking forward to NanoCon and meeting Anthony. Me too. I'm really excited. It'll be my first time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, cool. We're going to be on a panel um, together with a bunch of other people too. Yeah. Do I see? But uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It'll be my first kind of con like that. I wanna do like more workshops because sometimes I'm amazed how some of y'all, when y'all go out there and you make conversation with others, how like y'all um, Socratically think like the next question. Like mm. sometimes I get a little stuck. I'm like, God, like how, how the conversation just turns so um, organically. Like, do you wanna try it out real quick? Drink small. Yeah. Okay, you got time? Yeah. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. The way how I think about it is, <laughs> I gave this guy a fist bump already. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I forgot those two. I want to go to a burrito place before. I found yeah. the best way to do it mm -hmm. is. Um, there's the thing that I believe, mm -hmm. which is what I call the conclusion, and then there's me. Mm -hmm. Don't ask questions about me. Don't ask mm -hmm. questions about the conclusion. Ask about how I arrived at the conclusion. That thread that connects the two mm -hmm. is what I call the methodology. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're asking questions about the method that someone used to reach a conclusion, mm -hmm. they don't get defensive. Because right. they treat themselves and their conclusions as one thing, and you'll mm -hmm. get answers. It's like, well, I think it's like this. And you might check for body language, too. Just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as they're open and you're talking about the methodology, you can ask about whatever you so want. So you use the whiteboard, too, just like Anthony and... Yeah. Yeah. You want to try it out? <laughs> Someday. Try it out. 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 Okay, try it out. Okay, okay. I'll come to you with uh, a really, really non-religious belief. You want to do a non-religious one? Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I believe men are better than women. By the way, I'm Ty. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Bethany. Are you okay with this five-minute talk and being filmed? I'm sure we'll be fine with it. All right. So, how did you arrive to the conclusion that men are better than women? Well, I look at the job that I'm at. All my bosses are men. I look at, like, Olympics and sports and stuff. Strongest people are men. The sports that make the most money are full of men. It's pretty yeah. obvious that men are better than women. I don't, like, no one watches the WNBA, then my bosses are women. Women aren't stronger than men. It's pretty obvious. Hmm. So when you say it's pretty obvious, is it possible not, I don't have this information, but is it possible that I could show you, like, an athlete who's a woman who can do the same kind of sport a man can that's just as equal or even better yeah, or superior? Whoa. Superior? Like in football? Hmm, maybe like... You're saying if you found a girl that can kick as far as a guy can? Yeah, like what if, what if I could find somebody who could kick even better, who could throw a football better than Tom Brady? 
Tom Brady? <laughs> you mean NFL Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> if you could show me a girl like that, then yeah, I'd change my mind a little bit on that. What would you say were your confidence level on men being better? I'm 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. And he, and no he, way I could be wrong. No way. All no way. <laughs> this is great. So, like, if I was able to show you at a female equivalent of a Tom Brady, would you move down a little bit? She that? would have to be really good. You say if you show me someone who can win, I forgot how many titles he won. A lot. Like all the Super Bowl like rings. Like all the NFL rings. Yeah. And got all the sports trophies. Yeah. I'm really great with sports, by the way. We got the sports ball trophy that they oh, won wow. at the end of the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, so like yeah. we won the sports ball trophy. If you show me a girl that could do that, I'd be like, okay. Okay. Maybe on just that one thing. Maybe but just on the one. None of my bosses are still women, so I'd just be like, hmm. yeah, what but if, there's still a man signing her paycheck at the end what, of the day. What if, for example, I work at a company that's mostly female run and we have a, a CEO who's, you know, a major credit union. A man? Here. Oh, a woman. What? She's a mate. Yeah, she's a CEO. Who, Did her husband amazing. die and she gave him the business? No. Mm-hmm. No. I don't understand that. Doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so she, you know, she rose through the ranks and, you know, she used to be an attorney, but then she's been part of this credit union and she's mm. moved up from that lawyer type legal position to CEO. Okay. I'm not saying women can't do that, but I'm just saying men do it more. Like, there's obviously more men bosses, right? Hmm. Well,. There's more men in charge. Like, you look at the presidents, like, more men are in charge. You look anywhere, it's like, that's a guy who probably owns a company or something like that. But does it necessarily mean, for example, like, if just because there were more men in charge, does that mean that they're more competent or they have better abilities than, say, a woman? Does the, mm-hmm. uh, the abundance of men bosses or men in holding positions at, like, major companies and stuff, does that mean... That they're more. Does that lend credence to the fact that they're better than women? Just having the abundance. I'm just saying it's a good thing that they have. Mm-hmm. They're definitely stronger than women. They can lift more. So even if they're the same, you like think about it like this: If I have like a construction company, and like all my women are bosses, and I'm the only person that works there as a man, I'm going to be lifting everything. But if they're all men, then I'll be like, hey, Bill, help me lift this thing. You're the boss of the company, but can you help me lift this? And be like, yeah, I think that company's going to last longer because you got more people who are stronger there. And I think men are stronger on average than women. That's why I think they're better. Is it possible? You're doing good. Is it possible that women can dare to demonstrate the, the same type of characteristics like if they were in a construction company that they could still just as be as helpful or just as strong? They would need to be trained, probably by a man. <laughs> but at least if they can do that, then I'm okay, I'm okay with that too. So, so maybe, I want to say then 100%, I'd be like at least 99%. At least 99 At least 99 I still think we're stronger. I yeah. think we're better at the sports. I definitely think there's more bosses that are men. But I'd be, I'm... I'm not as confident as I was at the start. I'm fine with that. But I'm still very confident. Still very confident? Still very confident, sure. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> 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 sure, I like that. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. Hey, that's not bad. You hit all your points. And I was like, okay. Right. Hey, that's not bad. Literally, that's, that's all like you got to do. Right there. Okay, that's it? No, literally, because if you I can... Guess. If you can just... It's like keep the conversation in that direction, right? You leave on a positive note, yeah. and you just plant a seed, or put mm-hmm. a pebble, and then with that, they have either enough momentum to change their own mind, because you can't change anyone's mind, Mm-mm. but you can't inform them to say, hey, maybe I need to change my mind on that. And yeah. I can almost guarantee you, with a guy like that perspective, mm-hmm. the next time he's asked those questions, he'll either respond differently, mm-hmm. which means he's thought about it, mm-hmm. and going from absolute... 100% to even 99.99999% is mm-hmm. massive because you went from closed minded to cracked open the door. Mm-hmm. And that's all you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's fun too. I kind of like that. It's fun, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it makes you like think because mm. like, I even use it at my tech, that technique at work, like try to remember to use people's name and just be like, oh, huh. And then try to like, like mirror in here back yeah. and say, and it's a good thing that you did where it's not like, well, you're wrong because of X. You're yeah. Like, Don't you know this? Yeah. You're asking only about the methodology. Mm-hmm. I felt really un- confrontational, non confrontational. Yeah, yeah non confrontational. Yeah. All right. That is so cool. Let's get some food. Yeah, it's one out.